Hey guys, so I decided to do a quick little video because it is now the 30th anniversary of Neil Gaiman's magnum opus, The Sandman, and I wanted to talk about a little more about it. I, I did a video in the past about it, but that was kind of just a short little um, uh, overall review. I wanted to talk about more of my personal experiences with it and a little more as to why I like it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So I didn't grow up with comics. Um, I, I've always admired comics from afar. I always liked them. I respected them. But as a kid, I just wasn't into them. I never read them. I didn't know much about them. I only knew very, very basic things about characters. I knew, the, you know, I knew the you know characters from comics and their basic stories and their appearance and. And that was largely just through other media. That was largely through watching things like Batman, the animated series, uh, Superman, the animated series, Justice League, uh, reruns of the Justice Friends, etc., etc. Um, so I only really knew them from uh, comic book stories and characters from other mediums. It wasn't until I grew up and started uh, discovering comics on my own and reading them a lot and getting into them that way by reading things like Jeff Smith's Bone or uh, Dave Sims' Cerebus, or, you know, Frank Miller's work, or um, people like that. And naturally, that led me to discovering the Sandman. Um, what can I say about the Sandman, except I love it. <laughs> uh, it's actually my favorite comic book of all time, and... Um, while it's been a while since I've read them, I have read them a lot in the past. I've read, um, the first time I read them, I'd borrow them from various libraries through a very lengthy process of putting in a request form, the library, getting it from another library, shipping it to my library, and checking it out to me. And I did this for all, uh, ten volumes of the original series run, as well as a few of the spinoff and things. Um... And I, and I didn't read these till I was about 21 or 22. Um, so I, I came to the party late, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'd already been a fan of Neil Gaiman before. I had first read him when I was 14. The first thing I read by him was his novel Stardust. And that set me on the path of reading Gaiman for the rest of my life. Um, I still read his stuff. Uh, I still really like it, and every time he puts out a new book, I'm really interested in checking it out. Um, Stardust got me into him. Uh, I was hooked from then on. I immediately proceeded to read other things like Coraline and uh, American Gods and Odd and the Frost Giants, The Graveyard Book, Neverwhere, etc. And it was just kind of a matter of time before I started kind of reading his work in comics. And boy, am I glad. Um, so, established that I love gaming, established I didn't know much about comics. And even though I was getting into comics at this point, this was at the point when I was just reading as many comics as I could. I was reading, like, Alan Moore and, you know, and people like that. And I was checking out classics, like A Contract with God by Will Eisner. Things like that. Just kind of devouring whatever I could. Craig Thompson, etc. And I uh, found these, and I read them, starting with the first collected volume, Preludes and Nocturnes, which is actually, this is not the edition I first read. The one I read was an older collected edition. Uh, these are a modern reprint series. But I read Preludes and Nocturnes, and I knew right away, without any kind of context given, this was different. <laughs> this was... Unlike anything else I had read, um, and it remains even now, unlike anything else I've read, <laughs> and I hadn't felt a series suck me in this much since I was a kid and first read Harry Potter. I was hooked. I bl blazed at these like, books as fast as the libraries could provide them for me, and I've never looked back, and I've since bought them, and I've read them again and again and again. And the reason is they're, like I said, they're truly original. There's nothing like them. They are wholly unique. Um, and 
they're easily in Gaiman's magnum opus. I don't think he'll ever do anything to top this. Because this is honestly one of the most, probably the most ambitious project I've ever seen a writer tackle. Not only is it a long-form story, it's a long-form story that tackles the nature of stories themselves, as well as dips into pretty much anything that he's interested in. Gaiman draws from everything from the work of Shakespeare and Geoffrey Chaucer to comics, to mythology, to world religions, to fairy tales, to biblical narratives, to music, to just anything he's interested in. He's incorporated it into this larger framework, and it's amazing because he's such a talented writer. He pulls all these disparate threads together to make a very cohesive whole. And a large part of the story of the Sandman is told through smaller stories going on at the same time. A lot of issues in the original series would sometimes deviate from the main plot and just feature the character of Dream, or Orpheus, or whatever he's called. And, because uh, he goes by various names, uh, in different situations, you know, and as well as his siblings, like Death. And leave it to Gaiman to create Death as not a cold, skeletal, deathly, you know, dark figure, but his personification of Death is a bright, bubbly, happy-go-lucky goth girl, and she's great. Death, is, as, you know, done by Gaiman, is one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. And... Definitely, probably my favorite character in comics. Oh my god. <laughs> She's just great. All the characters are great, and that's what makes the series so likable. It's a combination of Gaiman's very, very ambitious and mature writing with um, an interesting framework to hang all these stories on. The stories themselves are interesting. The main narrative that's driving the story forward of Dream trying to reclaim his you know, kingdom of dreams themselves... That's also fascinating, while dipping into his experiences with various gods and goddesses and historical figures and fictitious characters and etc. All into these, like, woven threads into this interesting narrative. And my god, is it ambitious. <laughs> uh, I've... The appeal in it is just, like, there's something for everyone. And not only is it that, Gaiman knows how to tap into our emotions as readers. He knows how, to, one, to tell an entertaining story, which is the best way, two, to write very sympathetic and relatable characters, despite their uh, lofty, ethereal uh, backgrounds as being the personifications of natural forces like despair, delirium, dream, death. He knows how to make these, like, abstract characters and personification, personified form not only interesting, but relatable to the reader. And that takes a hell of a writer to do that. <laughs> but, you know, he, it's, it's this, you know, when I read these again, going back through them, I just, I see that he was only in his 20s when he was writing this, and this is like the work of someone far, far wiser and more mature than his years. Um, like, when I read these, I feel like these are written by an older person who's had a lot of life experience. You know, and certainly a lot of it, you know, education on various topics. But not only does it show Gaiman's wisdom and maturity, it shows his intelligence. He knows several references that he freely dips into whenever, you know, the story takes him. And I like that. I like that he's basically, he wanted to just create a story about stories, about narrative, about myth. And he does it. And it's so entertaining the way he, like, binds them all together. Um... And that's why I like it so much. It's unique, it's original, it's strange. It's about stories, and I'm a sucker for a good story. Uh, as written by someone who is a fantastic writer and knows how to write a good story. Um, you know, it, it's a commentary on storytelling. It's, a, it's while still being an interesting told story. It's, you know, it's a, it's mapping out the mind, it's mapping out human psyche, it's mapping out human desires, it's tapping into, you know, the human instincts that we all know and all feel, and the human emotions, while still have, drawing from and being influenced by everything, from, like I said, to Shakespearean plays, to comics, to history itself, to myth, to just everything. And I like all these eclectic influences. I like these 
because I'm interested in all these things myself, and it's cool to see your writer draw on these things to create a wholly original work. So that is why I love The Sandman. And while I wasn't there for it in its initial run, uh, when it first premiered its first issue in 1988 or 89, I'm still glad I know it. I'm still glad I came to it all these years later, and I'm glad that it has an appreciation around the world. And I'm very glad that entirely new generations of readers are discovering it for themselves all the time. I'm glad it's never been out of print, and I'm glad that it's still going, and I'm glad that there are people like me who are discovering comics that have this to look forward to. And honestly, it's cliche, but I genuinely envy anyone who gets to read it for the first time, because that was a powerful experience for me, and I can only imagine how powerful it is for someone else. Anyway, sorry for the rambling, but I just wanted to do something, uh, since it is the 30th anniversary of it, and express my appreciation of it. And I doubt Neil Gaiman will ever watch this, but, it, you know, if he ever did, I hope that he knows that I love his writing, and he's had a big inf impact on my life, and it's influenced me as a writer. Anyway, again, sorry for rambling. I'll finish now. I'll shut up. But check it out, please. Do yourself a favor and check out The Sandman. It's great, has something for everyone, lots of twists and turns, very powerful, very interesting, very strange, and just an interesting and world-spanning project that is super cool and super interesting. So, uh, that's, that's it for the 13-year-old fanboy rambling of me. I'm working on the Trigun video. I'll try to have that up soon. I'm actually watching the series all the way through in English and in Japanese, and I'm planning on scripting it. So it might take me a little bit, but I want to do something a little outside of books for a change, and so I picked Trigun. So I'll try to have that up as soon as I can. Don't know when, because like I said before, working around a full-time job. So uh, I'll try to have maybe some things up in between, but... Trigon is what I'm mainly working on. Just wanted to do this. So anyways, happy 30th anniversary, Sandman, and thank you, Neil Gaiman, for creating it. Bye.